So okay, we start with the technical path. meeting. And first point is Zoo. Uh, what's next? We we are. Yeah. Film your or share your screen. Yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Okay. So, I will, uh, so the goal is to measure the bending of uh, beam. Wait a second. Ah, you want to uh, talk about Zoo first? Yeah, <coughs> just this. And we, we use an array of ticket fibers. Okay. And TB uh, in a program to analyze the signals. Yes, so you want to talk about Zoom program? Uh, Zoom first. Um, so I'll, I'll share my screen uh, just to show you some. Uh, I'll actually, I'll share my desktop. Yeah, so we can do a demo actually. Um, all right, so this was just uh, some progress on, on the LabVIEW program to measure the uh, signals, inputs from different fibers. Uh, and this is uh, Jonathan's okay. assembly of three fibers on a piece of metal, which represents a beam. <coughs> and this is a mirror that we put in front of these three fibers, and then I can start the program. Sensor, light, so can you see uh, something? There you go. <coughs> so what you see here in the screen, the red, uh, the red point here is the difference between channel 1 and channel 2, which are two input fibers. So what we're trying to demonstrate here is to see that the, uh, this little red dot crosses the, the zero line, which is exactly when the, beam, the um, intensity of the two beams crisscross each other. I'm just moving the, the mirror slightly. And I can see a crossover of all the beams on the right. Um, on the right graph and on the left, you see the red going from past max. This is not working. I just have to set the distance of the fibers properly to demonstrate this. this All right, so it's just a proof of concept showing that we can bring light to the sensitive part and then have two fibers collecting data and being able to know if the beam is moving left or right. I mean, the, the, the metal beam is moving left or right. And if we have another fiber, we will have information in two dimensions, <coughs> left, right, up, and down. Done with this presentation. Okay. All right. So to, move to the next next point, Philip. Philip pro Philip's project is a mosquito project. Uh, What's up, uh, Ivan? We did some biological experiments recently. Uh, no, uh, because the electrodes are not fixed yet, and uh, what we did. We collected uh, the samples from uh, the wild type mouse and uh, made them permeabilized. So now we can store them at minus 20. So you have skin muscles. Yes, yeah, so we have permeabilized uh, cells. So what are you taking notes? I don't understand. Um, meeting pad uh, on top. Here? No, in the pad. Yeah, yeah. Here, yeah, yeah. Here, we are at the right place. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, and what? what's next? So you, you without so electrodes, you can't... Well, we, we will fix the electrodes. So this is something to be done, say, tomorrow. Because I'm going to go to the lab tomorrow. And... Uh, 
in the meantime, uh, we can try to activate the uh, skin muscles chemically. Because last time, James and I, we prepared all the solutions for the chemical type of activation. So for this type of experiment, we are pretty much set up. So after we received the bath from uh, China, the, the special bath for uh, the chemical activation, we can put it on uh, Philips microscope. Uh, we already printed the adapter for this bath. So we can put it right on the stage and uh, try it with the mosquito. So you need the, the bath? Yeah, we need the bath. Uh, just as a trial experiment, like a trial, we can make with the bath that we have now. OK. The new bath that will come, it will be just more convenient. OK. And did you ever measure a force with the transducer? No, because we haven't had the compression yet. OK, so with the chemical activation, you hope you would have contraction more easily? Yeah, well, this is a highly controllable contraction. Uh, we did passive stretches. Uh, and uh, I will need to take a new transducer for that, because the one that we were using uh, lost its uh, mechanical property. Okay, so you have to glue a hook. Yeah, I will have to glue a hook on a new uh, mosquito. And electrostimulation, you just <coughs> cancel that in your to No, no, no. Uh, so basically, tomorrow when I go there, there are a few things to be done. First of all, to uh, fix the bath, because, uh, well, one glass tube in the bus is broken. We will have to glue that. Then put the electrodes back with the new um, graphite nozzles to see. Uh, you have all the parts? Yeah, I have all the parts in the, in the lab. So we will have to fix the bus. And the second thing is to glue the hook on the new mosquito. And if I have enough time tomorrow, I will try to activate, to dissect the cell. Uh, the permeabilized cell and uh, try to just activate just to see if it's contracting. Uh, because Philip, he now has this uh, big uh, dissection microscope similar to the one that we had. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with this, it will be very easy to do the dissection. Okay. So, you will, uh, so basically, uh, yeah, I have everything I need, like no complaints. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow also uh, we can collect more samples for, uh, for like more to make them permeabilized. Collect samples to make them permeabilized. Yeah, because uh, tomorrow most probably our <coughs> colleagues from upstairs they will have another mouse, and uh, after they take uh, whatever they need, they just give it to us, and uh, we take the rest. Uh, last time, James and I, we took the diaphragm and uh, the psoas muscles. So probably tomorrow we can do the same. But we have more uh, samples in stock. Okay. <coughs> okay. So that's okay. it for the biological samples? Uh, for now, these are the updates. Yeah, tomorrow I will have...
I was always trying to uh, fit the requirements of the CNC machines, you know? Yes, yes. So you have to design it in three yeah. layers or two layers or exactly. so <coughs> and then put these layers together. Yeah, yeah it's, it was the path of reduction of everything. So with the 3D printing, you can go as crazy as you want. <coughs> so that's a big advantage, right? Kind of, yeah. If it, if it works, okay. Okay, so it's worth trying. Okay, so let's pay 100 bucks and try it, huh? So whenever you're ready to go, just tell me and... Um... But before, I just want to see other pieces that they made <coughs> and uh, see if the resolution is kind of... So will you order the same part but 3D printed? Uh, the model is not the same. Uh, the, the model now is comes in one piece, and Daniel already created a model like that. But you don't know, you don't know the price. But it's, so it's going to look exactly the same. One comes in two pieces or three pieces? Two layers. One comes in two layers that you stick together, and the other one is one layer. So they're going to look the same. One is 3D printed, one is... Yeah, yeah. you don't know the price. Uh, Daniel is worth 100, uh, around 100 bucks? Uh, 200, I would say. 200? Yeah. Roughly. Roughly. Uh, okay, I want to add something else for feel. Uh, <clears throat> but guys, uh, this is actually a, this is not just about the bottom. Uh, is the the path our st strategy? Like because eventually yes. we might we, we might want to buy this uh, if this 3D print is very good. Yeah. We might want to have one for ourselves. Yeah. Uh, if it's not good enough for us, then we follow the CNC path always. So is the is the, the way we choose now like which way we go? Okay. Now for the <coughs> for the joint account transducer, based on our discussions with Frederick, I will try today the mosquito with a joint account transducer with an LED uh, instead of a the LD, uh, just to see if the thing is more stable. Um, so uh, I'm gonna do that today. Um, For what project? Fields project. Oh, well, the mosquito project. Okay, so I'm um, going okay. to try LED instead of the LD and, and see and compare the, the yes. signals. With fiber. Glass fiber. Same thing, just using glass fiber. Okay, with your now we have the new <coughs> device, you can shoot light. Yeah, well, you, you remember, so I could shoot some light. The problem is that I, I couldn't measure anything. Because I didn't have the game, but now we I brought this the mosquito demo back from Phil, mm -hmm. and this one has the game, so I can turn up the game and, and do some averaging. I don't know why I can, I can see, 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 uh, still see something. Okay, and the others don't have the game. Uh, this one doesn't have. Game. We're waiting for the parts from China. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't have so. It's it's fixed. It works very well with PMA, but if you wanna go to smaller fiber where. The coupling is very bad, you know. <clears throat> then you lose so much light that you need to, you need to amplify it. <clears throat> I think there is some amplification factor here, but it's more. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's amplified. It's, I, I set it to be optimal for what we're getting. Okay. So you will steal my mosquito. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we go to the. Uh, oh, uh, you wanna say something about uh, your experiments with uh, the coin? Uh, not yet. I will receive some new chemicals next week, I guess, or end of this week. So you're still ready for a solution? So I will, uh, I have to build this device where the, it flows okay. around the fibers. I have to do that. So now we have new connectors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yesterday I did some interesting music uh, experiments. I have to write it down. That we can monitor. <coughs> Real time, uh, we need to build a, <coughs> a sort of a, a, a mirror cup. Mirror. So, I, th I think the discussion we had yesterday was very interesting. So, what what oh, we can okay, do? Mirror cap. Yes, what we can do? We can get the minimum and the maximum. Uh, so we can get the minimum by just opening the fiber and have that as a reference, which means. When no light comes back, this is how much voltage we get. Yeah. So now we have the minimum. And then if we have a mirror cap that we can put on the connector, you know, 100% mirror, good, yeah. a good silver mirror that we can buy, you know, then, then you have the maximum light that comes. Yes. So during fiber coding, you have the minimum and the maximum, so then you know exactly when to stop the coding in between this minimum right. and maximum. Because before, we're just guessing. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. looking at the S-curve and hoping that it's a yeah. question point, but we're not sure exactly. 
Yeah. So we need to have this cup where where you know there's a mirror and and with a connector. So you just connect the mosquito tray into a mirror. Okay. It's like having uh, you know it's like having a termination for your cables, right? Yeah. Just short them, right? So this is like shorting the light. You just send everything back. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's the uh, <clears throat> that is that is the signal where all the light comes comes back. So it means that when you coat. And, and if, if you go closer to that level there, you know, it, it means that you have a perfect hair, which will never happen because we have some scattering and some absorption. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, we're fighting against these two things that are lossy, two lossy processes, absorption mm -hmm. in the layer and scattering because the mirror is not perfectly mm -hmm. uh, flat, okay, the mirror from the uh, coil. Yes. Right? Okay. So, uh, yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> nice things to come. Okay, piezo manipulator, an update. Can we test the transducers with the piezo we have now? Are we looking at me here? <laughs> uh, TV? <coughs> yeah. Can we test the transducers with the piezo we have now? Yes. Oh, yeah? Well, we can test the transducer with Dilson's piezo even if it comes back uh, slowly. Yeah. So, but we still have a. Uh, we need to order. We need to order these uh, pieces, man. Um, uh, just to, for the order from China. For order. Us, did you pay already? No. What are you paying? Uh, I can do it just after, after the meeting. meeting. Okay. So it's going to be manufactured by the twenty sixth, and they're doing two day express DHL. So it'll we'll be here by hopefully next Wednesday. That's that's what the switches. The order, piezo stack holder. Back. Oh, okay. The camera activation band top and bottom, the frame, the piezo cylinder for the mosquito, piezo okay. stack cylinder, and the piezo XYZ stage stack card. Okay. So, can. Okay, and, and I need to order. Okay, so. <clears throat> orders. For the parts. Um, Right. Uh, we need order the piezo ceramic. And what else? Electronics? Should we order some electronics for the piezos? Um, I'm going to make a digital key order this week. So if we need any electronics, I can order them. But uh, do we have everything? You, uh, we already ordered the. Uh, yeah, we don't. We're not, we're not missing anything. Okay. Uh, I'd like to get back on our idea in the piezo uh, soon. Okay. To do the uh, ideal setup, the marketable product. So we do we have this meeting uh, with uh, these pros? I don't know. If they are going to give us a solution in ten hours or less. Meeting. Sure. For ten hours. Uh, okay. If you want, uh, I said it. I I don't, but uh, I don't think we're doing that miracles in ten hours. Uh, depends how, how many of these can we do? I don't want to waste it on this problem. Okay. So if we I haven't tried the H bridge yet. I did like I was gonna do the H bridge, but instead I chose the easiest guaranteed solution, which is what we have at Phil at the uh, Wilson's right now. Okay. We can do several. I don't know how many. Yeah. So uh, it's if we prepare well, let's say before we go there uh, and set up a meeting, we actually uh, you know prepare the document and say this is what we want, this is the range of outputs we want, uh, and uh, you know stability plus minus all these things tolerance. Uh, this is what we did, all right, and this is what the problems we have. This is what we tried, okay. Uh, this is how far we look. So I think we can optimize the meeting in 10 hours. 10 hours, that's a lot of time. That's yes. two days, right? Two days of uh, working together, you know, to solve uh, the thing. Mm. So we can take uh, one hour of presentation, make them understand the problem, and then start working with it, you know? Because in the end of this meeting, we could have a, a circuit, right? A functional circuit. Well, uh, Who are these people? And what are their qualifications? The profs, uh, profs uh, technicians, and engineers. At the university? At St. Therese uh, Cégep. Okay.
the resource is there, you know. We can try something else. And then we can also. My meeting had crashes. Okay, no, I took notes. Uh, <coughs> Intrinsic fiber transducer, are we going there now or are you want to add something else? No, no. Okay, uh, are we talking about extrinsic ones? Uh, no. Intrinsic. Yes. Uh, intrinsic, no, but we, we just finished talking about the extrinsic. I just wanted to ask, uh, like, uh, what was, uh, remember I sent you an email about the grooved transducer, like the grooved fiber. Uh, if we should design some sort of like a simple machine? Yes. Um, <clears throat> you know, before we go into the design, I, I think I need to <clears throat> see, because uh, there is some optimization. <clears throat> We're going to cover this a little later with the stashes. Yes, we can put them to work for that. Okay, you want to start talking about that now or later? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can. We can. I mean, it's it's the same sub topic here. So you, we talked about the uh, robot finger thing. Okay, grooving fibers. Uh, these guys came yesterday, Stefan and, and Christian, and they're interested in this application. So <clears throat> there is some optimization. Like, what is the sensitivity they want? So, and that that relates to the depth of the groove and the pitch of the groove. Mm -hmm. uh, and also they might ask for smaller diameter fiber. They might want to go to 500, uh, 500 micron um, diameter. So all that changes you know, uh, the apparatus that you use to groove, you see? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if you go for mechanical grooving and if you want smaller grooves because it's a smaller fiber, maybe you need a special edge or knife. Uh, you know that we could, we could order. Um, yeah, so because then we can do hot stuff. Ideally, we have a little chisel. Yes, a V-shaped chisel that's like ten microns wide. Right? Yeah, so that removes. Yeah, the material you, take coil. Yeah, you take it out, take the material out. Actually. Yeah, yeah. Instead of like making like. The, the and then for the glass fiber, we could get a diamond. But would that make a? We score with the break. No, glass fiber that's a, that's worth scoring, yeah, because it breaks. That's two thousand yeah. break. Yeah. Uh, well, plastic. I mean, for robotic applications, it's the idea right. the idea of burning the pattern with the laser uh -huh. is not good anymore. Well, that's a femtosecond laser requirement. I uh, know you can do uh, another second if you have. Yeah. Well, you similar to the <laughs> burning the information on the CD surface. Yes. yes, yes. So yeah, you can do sometimes like that. But I use the liquid crystal there. Uh, it doesn't require uh, five lasers, you know. <coughs> there's a layer inside the CD that they throw. Well, uh, how much would it be to buy a laser cutter? You know, for <coughs> for burning glass, uh, you need a <coughs> you need a CO two laser. Very good. The wavelength is very. The wavelength is the it's 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 a uh, hits of an absorption band of the glass, and CO two lasers are used for melting glass. Yeah. But you know That's which laser good. I'm talking about. Remember, once you showed like the guys you used to work for, or uh, okay. like they have the fancy laser cutter, like cut the. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't, in that case, you don't cut. You just uh, you just melt a little bit. Vaporize, right? Uh, not necessarily vaporize. Just uh, change the lattice, change the structure of the glass. But this machine, like and the, the, the setup and everything, is probably very expensive. CO2 lasers are not expensive, but it's you know, a lot of DIY kits. It requires some uh, assembly, you know. It's kind of uh, it's so very it's expensive like to make. Project itself. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah it's a project itself. All right. Uh, but we can go with the scoring uh, in hot uh, a hot wire, hot very hot, very small hot wire, mm -hmm. you know, or stuff like that. Do we have a glass to cut? Yeah. No, so to, uh, like take a very hot. Uh, Unseen wire or whatever, and make the grooves on glass. Score the surface mm -hmm. somehow. How about arc? Like as if it was uh, like arc. I don't know if they use arcs. Uh, well, they, they use arcs to uh, <coughs> to um, slice fibers together and to shape the head of the fiber. And then they use it to. Uh... So uh, basically, then you can get also UV lasers and. Uh, 
you know, UV lasers are used for uh, making black lights. Mm -hmm. So we leave this question open, like on how to uh, extrinsically sensitize the fibers yeah. for these guys. Yeah. We'll see what's next with uh, the panel. Yeah. Now, I, I, I would like this to be driven by applications, you know, these guys to come and say, yeah, yeah. hey, this is what we need, you know. But then, then it goes into electronics because, as we spoke yesterday, uh, we can have this device uh, with two fibers if, there is, if it operates in a noisy environment. So you have one fiber which is sensitized at one particular place where your, uh, where your measurement is. And then all along the fiber, in, you know, if, if you have a noisy environment, you're still going to generate some signal. So what you're going to do, you're going to put in parallel with that a fiber which is not sensitized. So, and you're doing the ratio between the two. And you know that uh, everything that comes from the environment you know, will be cancelled out. So now every sensor has two fibers in. Okay? That requires some changes in the electronics. Let's say you have a, four, a five finger sensor, then you need two, fiber, two fibers per each uh, finger. Mm -hmm. So you need basically 10 photo detectors. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because for every finger you have one fiber that was sensitized and the, the other one which is just sitting there as a reference. Mm. Okay, so every sensor is referenced. Okay. Or you can have the cheaper solution where the environment is not that noisy and you use just one reference for many sensors. So okay, so you, the, and, and that you can take it from the output of the laser or the photodiodes and that uh, that is just cancelling any fluctuations of the source from that comes from thermal fluctuations of the circuit, right? Mm. And, and and that that assumes that the environment is not noisy. And, and the light that is carried to the points of sensitivity doesn't change in the way, right? If the environment is not noisy, then you need another fiber which is not scored to have the, the reference running through the environment to the point of measurement, right? So every finger will have, because it goes through the joint, other joints, every finger will have a reference, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the electronics now we have, we can use this electronic that we have for two fingers because we have four inputs. Okay, mm -hmm. that could run to other joints, so you have a noisy environment, you know, giving you a signal here, but you want the you want the signal to come only from the finger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you run one sensitized and one unsensitized fiber to the to the finger, and the only signal that you're going to measure during the, the ratio it's, it comes from the from the joint of, of your finger, right? Because this gets cancelled out. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can do two fingers with that, and we can expand that, you know, eventually. Well, they're not like this, they're like this, so which has already a grip, you know what I mean? Well, you just measure the flexibility, right? Yeah, but they're not like this, they're like this, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's already in use, you know? Well, yes, you can, you can have a grip, yeah, you can have a grip for a... Because there are robots that use only two things. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So that requires some electronics, and now, Jonathan, so you students can work on electronics, can work on optics, can work on... Uh, yeah, so your students. My students. Are we going to talk about stashes now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there's two aspects for the project two. So there's the stash and project two. We'll just do the project two first since uh, I didn't get any uh, responses on that. Uh, the teacher asked me to make a list, a Google Doc, so that, and he's going to refer to students to that to get ideas. And we can kind of put our uh, our ideas there and our incentives and what we can help with. Them. So, like, we have circuits made, we have technology to use, and uh, incentives is space, saving lives, I don't know, feature stashes, maybe, I don't know. Uh, as far as the stashes, there are three people who expressed interest. One of the guys was highly recommended, he's uh, in the photonics program, and the guy, the teacher grabbed him and said, this guy is your man, he's your photonics genius. Very smart guy, mechanically and mentally. Uh, there's a second guy who is very good, a hard worker. He may have some special needs. So he will require more, uh, he'll have to have a direct, clear goals to reach and basically be managed on the way to his goal. He wouldn't be working well with like uh, open-ended questions, let's say. Mm -hmm. So it'd be better, this person is, 
he can solve our problems if we tell him what exactly the problem is and how to get there. <coughs> or he can, I think it'd be good for assembling transducers, stuff like that. That'd be great. There's a third a third student who is interested. He likes theory. I think he's scared of hands-on stuff and designing stuff. He wants to do theoretical modeling or I don't know what, solving equations, something like that. So if he's a little bit hesitant on, the other two I, I say go for it right away. Uh, this guy, I don't know what his ability is necessarily. So if we have a need for 60 hours of theoretical modeling or something, like maybe he can calculate the grooves, groove spacing, uh, I don't know. So there's a tool here to make a list of projects they could work for? Yeah. What did he say about uh, the double finger thing? Nothing, they all ran away. Yeah? Yeah. They didn't want to hear anything, they just wanted to run for their lives. Okay. It's the first day of class, 7.30 p.m., and they had started at 8.30 in that morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they had no intention of being there for more than 30 seconds extra. Than that. I understand. So yeah, so the stat basically is 50 to 60 hours of work. We have to make a schedule with them. They're asking if we, uh, so basically it has to be a mentor or someone, a go-to guy for each for the students. And they're going to work uh, at the CJ, they're not going to come here. No, they're going to come here. Stages are here. And we can interview them. Yeah, so I was thinking for to make sure we can interview them, see if they're the right uh, stuff for what we need. Especially the guy who's more in theory and not hands-on. OK. Uh, Ask a question. What? We'll get a question. Ah. Okay. Yeah, so they have March break, so they can come the whole break. So they can do 40 hours um, in March break. So if they want, if we have like a marathon session of stuff set up, like maybe the guy with special needs there who likes special direct uh, work, okay. he can maybe make uh, 100 transducers in a week, you know? Okay. <laughs> so we can find some nice uh, repetitive tasks for him or whatever he wants, whatever we want done. But the other guys, uh, if we can line up all our eggs for our big work party on one week straight, mm -hmm. we can have three students here working full time. And by then, hopefully, we'll have a bigger space. March. March, they have a week off in March. Okay. Other than that, uh, we have to fit in their schedule when they can come here. They're asking on weekends. I don't really feel like coming on weekends. Okay. My only concern is I wanted to run away to China, so I can't really abandon the students if they're here and I'm in charge of them. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to figure something out for that. When are you coming back? I don't know when I'm leaving. So. <laughs> are you going to India? No, I'm not going to. No? It's too short notice. Uh, so the stash, they have to report their work. Okay. So I think that fits perfectly with Bob's stuff about the accounting. They have to like, present sheets of yes. like, work. Yes. And if we can really show how accountable we are for their time, show that they weren't wasting time, that they learned mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. they, that they accomplished a lot, and it's verifiable, documented work. I'm hoping to go speak to the dean of uh, the technical programs mm -hmm. and get some stages from the other departments, like computer science. Oh, that's nice, yeah. Oh. Art. <coughs> so that feeds into the other thing, yeah. yeah. Wow. yeah. Because it's my old prof who is now the dean of all those, the whole department. Mm -hmm. And so if we have nice results for this stage, it's for the future, it has good results. Like, the, the teacher, uh, Dr. Nikolai Surudda, uh, Romanian. Yeah, the Romanian guy. I can get his name right now. Nikolai Surudda? No. Uh, oh, there it is. Do you have anything against the uh, Romanian? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Nikolai Surudda. Uh, Nikolai. To do you draw you? To draw you, yes, that's a pure Romanian name. Okay, Dr. Nikolai to draw you. He's very excited. He wants me to do his work for him. So, if we can mentor and manage students, it makes less work for them, so they're very happy. We get free labor, but not to get paid. That's good. And if we don't have people fighting on our project ideas, we can just put the stagiaires to work on them. Okay. 
toolkit, right? So assembly device and all that. So if we want, we can put them in teams and make them work together and design and build our assembly device or our optical fiber coding device or whatever. But I would like to have them busy the whole time they're here. So when do we have to precise the projects? Today. Yeah, we should, we should open the document today and have it updated continuously. So we can email them to them. OK, so <clears throat> we're going to open um, a Google Doc, yeah? And have a, and start putting information. Uh, we have to make it like very graphical, right? Whatever, you just link to this pages or something. Maybe we should show some nice pictures, make it, uh, make it graph graphical for them. Understand the application, understand some basics about how it works. <laughs> Right. It's, it's just give them ideas. Is there actually any idea that we can speak to them and do okay. it? <clears throat> and this is gonna be for the lost causes of lost cases who don't have an uh, idea yet. They don't know what they're doing. So by next week, they don't have an idea. They're gonna get kind of pushed towards something. Okay, 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 okay. So they, now, now is the time where they choose the project, right? Yeah. Okay. Right now, they have they have two weeks to submit their proposal. But. When I was doing stage, just five sentences proposal was enough. Yeah, for them, they have, they're actually getting marked on it. It's, it's part of their comprehensive assessment. So they're going to have to make a full proposal with timeline and everything due in two weeks. So next week, if they don't have an idea ready yet, then they're going to have to hurry up. So they should have getting their ideas this week. That's why we have to get this document out of the gate. I made a little notepad uh, next time you went somewhere. Just some ideas, like what we were talking about yesterday. Yeah. That's from your uh, interaction with them? The, the no, that's what I wrote before. Just some notes. Okay. Optical fiber coding device, uh, transducer manufacturing device, routing fiber device. So those are like three devices to make. And then the other one was uh, programming? Yeah, robot finger, or something like that. Okay. They want for the projects. They want tangible results, uh, something you can touch and feel and look. They're not too keen on theoretical, but if it's a tangible theoretical process, so like if someone's making ideas on how to space the grooving, mm -hmm. and they actually groove it and they test it empirically to show their results. Can we also say them. that they could have the prototype they build? <clears throat> can we give them the prototype or no. something to walk? Walk away with and, and show the other kids. Or? It's good for them, but the prof, I don't think they care about. It. No, like uh, they're gonna have the prototype they're gonna bring into the presentation. Okay. And then they're gonna get grilled by everybody because teachers don't have time to go and touch and feel <coughs> and analyze all the stuff. Okay. Theoretically, they can make up all the results from the presentation. What should we push as a project? Is the robot finger want to push other part of the project? It has to be something they want to do because otherwise they're just gonna cram at the last second and fudge the results. They're real scientists of that age. Arduino based uh, kit? With robotic fingers? Because you can put people working together. You can put the, the, the guy with the theory, uh, you know, uh, figuring out some, 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 you know, the mathematical relations between, you know, how to treat these, these signals and, and have uh, people that are good with uh, mechanics, you know, actually doing the grouping thing. And, yeah. Um, before Somebody in electronics and work as a team, and then and then you say, hey, in the end you can you can have a glove that is sensitive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Grooming <coughs> the robot, the, the robotic fibers. <coughs> yeah. So, so an optical based uh, encoder glove. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you can say we can make a video, put it on YouTube for you, and you know make. A, I mean, I, I, want, I want to make the result. They have when they walk out of it, you know, they have something like no, but they, they can show to their friends, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's their responsibility. Okay. Me this. The purpose of this project is to take an idea and have it deliverable with documentation. Okay. And we can't do that work for them. We're just going to give them theoretical advice, okay. tell them what Google searches to use, maybe suggest components, maybe give them circuit uh, schematics or something. But we're not supposed to do the work for them. Okay. That's the key. Otherwise, we're not going to get to. But I like in the end, you know, to have for them to have something to say. I didn't just get a mark out of it, you know. 
Yeah, but I have a video that I can show my friends. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but I have a it's project. Like an incentive. My project too is still in my house. It's on my shelf. <laughs> I made it and I brought it home. Right. So the stuff here, they can make they can make two, one for us, one yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah. Or they're gonna break twenty of them on the way, so they can keep the broken ones. All right. So okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to see a way to package, you know, a little yeah. bit. The, what I want them to do for the flow sensor, I told them that the Canadian Space Agency is very interested in this. Yeah. And if we get a, I said, if we get a grant based on your idea, well, we're going to meet tack you for the summer, mm -hmm. right? Okay. We'll hire you as a staff for the summer. You know, okay. With some follow up. And it's all open source, so they can sell it if they want, right? Okay, right. so what, were they interested in uh, more in the, the flow sensor or more in the... There, the there's some flow sensor interest, but there's, they're more interested in getting the hell out of the class as fast as possible. Okay. So it was like the wrong time to talk to speak. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, that was a little bit unfortunate. I should have presented the ideas to begin with, before the class started. Mm -hmm. You had a whole class, or you? Uh... There was uh, eighteen students. Two of them did show. Okay. Um, we move to the next part. Yeah. All right. See deck tomorrow. Do we have to prepare something? What is the deck? Who's Who's going to the select meeting tomorrow? Uh, I will. I I will go also. Yeah. Is Should I go? Is there any reason for me to go? Or can I yes, so you can. You can go. Yeah. Sure. Anyway, and you guys don't record these meetings? Ah, uh, you know, because of the day. Sometimes you don't have to tell them. It's so basically, I, I don't even know what, what we're doing there. I no, think, no, I think uh, it's just a first. It's just a sort of an informal thing. But I wanted to gather some information for them so that, you know, to have them at least commit to, you know, look into the case seriously and and guide us in the process. Because the, That's it. The end result is to have some money. What do you finance? Yeah. And I think they, my, my idea <clears throat> is to say, OK, here's how we demonstrate potential. There are individual entrepreneurs that are interested in this space. OK, it's, we can put forward practice scientific. We can put forward robotic uh, sequencing. sequencing and, you know, Christian's uh, company to uh, you know other companies, and say these are entrepreneurs that are in business and they're interested in this space, and then we can also have some support, you know, and then you can cite these people from academia that are interested in the ecosystem kind of you know project phenomena, and say you know these people can give us and logistical they, support. You guys are doing a pitch, so robot sequencing is represented, tax is represented, sensor is represented. Uh, can you get Phil there, or uh, present in academia? Yeah, yeah. That, that's another thing. So show the show the expansion of this lab into My. academic labs, you know, and say, hey, uh, you know, uh, it's like his example. I like a lot where the university sent a student to do this work there yes, because yes. they had equipment that specialized. Yeah. So that's that's also part of the thing. So we should you know put these things on the table to just to show that there is potential and this, this because what they want to see. They want to see this lab generating some economic activity. Mm -hmm. You know, but if it's an incubator, if we're using it as like a startup accelerator, yeah, then it will be generating economic activity. Exactly. Yeah. Like Daniel also he's, he's another case because uh, he wants to have his own uh, sort of uh, business business of three D modeling and CNC and stuff like that. So you're doing you, projects for other people. You would be there then. No. So I think three of us from this office is good enough. I don't need to show. No, I don't yeah, you don't have to. It's, it's I, I don't want to fill up the room. Like, because we overwhelmed some of our meetings so far. So, so, uh, so Stefan is not coming either. No? Okay. What about uh, Olivier yeah. Stemmel Jean? He wants to let uh, Community and uh, Ecofab drive this. <clears throat> yeah. That's what he said. Okay. Anyway, it's going to be very interesting because the idea is to get some funding for the lab. You know, to buy some equipment and. Uh, I'm working in space and equipment. 
We always get equipment. And pay pay for some some part of the rent. Yeah, we can get free free space or subsidized space. Yeah. Like if they pay some of the rent, and then everybody else just divides out the rest. The rent is expensive. It's gonna be over three thousand three thousand dollars per month. And how much are we willing to pay out of that? Five hundred. So. You mean as a rent? That yeah. is gonna be another meeting where. It's the whole community turning around uh, Ecofab and, and FabLab, and there we're going to say to people, okay, who is interested and who wants to put some money? And the idea is to create a sort of a non-profit core and say, okay, the guys that put money and sustain the place, they are part of the co-founders of this core. Yeah, but if I go there and I want a closed room with a door and a lock on the door, yeah. how much do I have to pay per square foot? Yeah, that's... Um, and my door is going to be unlocked and open and welcoming at least once a week, if not three days a week or whatever. Okay, so you're interested in bringing some electronic equipment. Well, I want to go there, let's say, not me necessarily because I have this place, but let's say I'm Sean and I want to start my own company. I want to have a, an office and be yeah. a professional and have a nice postal address and a nice building outside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how much does he have to pay to have an enclosed space that yeah. he can not worry about people stealing his trade secrets, his equipment. Yeah. So, so you see, the, we, we had this discussion at the last meeting, how do you structure the space? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think what, what, what we wouldn't like to see uh, is for somebody to keep, to keep a, a, a room closed uh, six days per week, you know, and, and that's, that's a dead space for, for, for everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Even if the guy is paying rent, Yes, it's not living. It's not a living, yeah, it's, you know what I'm saying? It's not what? It's, uh, there's no life. There's no, oh, it has to be a vibrant ecosystem. So what it could be is like a full out as is you have your locker, you have yes, noise yes. canceling headphones. Yes, yes. And that's your space, but it's part of the common space. Yeah, because otherwise you end up renting a space, dividing it into small spaces, and, and renting these small spaces, and it becomes, yes. Yeah. Where there's absolutely no projects and, and shared equipment where you know things can flow, right? And shared information. And th th that's that's a business in, um, in itself. You know, there is there's shared spaces for work that are functional like that. But the artists they usually have these huge lofts, you know, and they everybody shares a desk. Okay, and so so that is renting a big space, chopping into smaller spaces, you know, and everybody rents a space, right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and then if you're not there, well, nobody works in, in your space. Uh, but we don't know. I mean. Uh, there was an artist that wanted to rent uh, exactly the same thing she proposed when I was at the Ecofarm. She said, I would like to have my own little space for arts, you know, mm -hmm. in there. And I'll pay the rent, you know. And I thought, that's an interesting case because she's an artist. I'm you an see? artist of circuits. Yeah, so, sometimes you want quiet room. And she was. It's like a different type of activities, you know, she plays with uh, um, music, theater. Yeah, stuff she uses that. like uh, a paintball machine gun to make her art. It's extremely loud. It's extremely yeah, yeah, then, then, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And she brings artists that are not necessarily interested in, in sensory kinds of projects or other projects. You know, they can class them there, you know, with their own interest. Inspired there. artists, craft. So anyway, that's so. These are these are on the table. You know, how do you structure this play, the play, the, the space? Who's interested? If you get a lot of people interested and a lot of people are asking for their own little quarter, you know, then and if you get a lot of money from these people, like they commit financially, you know, to run the space. Then you rent a bigger space and you chop it up and you have some common areas and you have some private offices, you know. But we don't know. We don't know how but people like, respond. Like a uh, case for Bill, Bill needs to have silence in order to think. Yes. He can't think. He can't be productive yeah. in certain aspects of his work unless there's people not talking to him for hours yeah. on end. But me too sometimes. So we need to have a little yeah. light on our chair that says, "Please <laughs> fuck off. Don't mm -hmm. talk to me." Another light says, "If you want to talk to me, send me an email." Yeah, you know I'm online, and the third light saying, "Please bother me. I need distractions." So th that discussion here will happen uh, next uh, cafe next Wednesday. Yeah, the, that's that's the discussion in a cafe. You know, people are just discussing about that. how do you structure the space, what are your needs, what do you do? Because <clears throat> you know. if it's like an orange light meeting, I'm willing to talk to you, but you have to send me a text, and I'm gonna look at the text message on and my decide. chat. When I have time, like mm -hmm. in my stream of consciousness, oh, there's a break. Oh, what is done? Oh, yeah, that's the answer. And you turn around, hey, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. actually work. There is also a button, invisible. You know? Yeah, exactly. 
So they have not even here. When the when red light's on, yeah. yeah. If you can't see me, don't talk to me. You don't <laughs> see me? Yeah, exactly. Because if it breaks your concentration and it takes you an hour to get to that mode, mm -hmm. you're not going to come back ever again. Do I stop recording? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh,